Hello and welcome to the dating game with Troy Francis. Uh, we are here tonight to talk about the latest in the Andrew and Tristan Tate case because there's been some new developments which people will likely be aware of. And in order to, to do this, I've decided to bring in some expert help today. So I'm joined by none other than Lauren de Laguna, who you can now see on the screen. Hello, Lauren. How are you? And um, I'm doing great. Good stuff. Very glad to hear it. So Lauren is in, in Miami. I am in very cold, rainy London, but it's good that we're reconnected now digitally. So um, I guess before yeah. we, I guess before we go any further, if you wanted to like introduce yourself to the guys and just say a bit about yourself and you know your, uh, you know your your legal background in this stuff. Okay. Yeah. My name is um, Lauren. I go by Lauren De Laguna online. I'm on Instagram. I'm on uh, Twitter X now, and I'm on YouTube. And um, I recently passed the bar here in Florida and I was just admitted to the Arizona bar. So I just need to swear in and then I'll be an attorney. And um, yeah. And I, on it, and ironically, I have gotten the opportunity to talk to Tristan Tate a little bit oh, really? about this. Not, yeah, not uh, recently, but like a few months ago. Oh, nice. Um, okay. I had it. Yeah. So uh, it's funny. I told him to be wary in case the UK or the United States tries to extradite. So, um, wow. Jesus. That's interesting. So, was that, did, yeah. you, did you do like a, was that a public thing or was it just like a more like a pro private conversation you had? I mean, did you do a podcast? Yeah, no, we just had a private, no, we just had a private conversation, um, like over DMs and Twitter yeah. and stuff. And, um, yeah, I, he's just, uh, you know, he's being told things by his attorney, certain things like I won't disclose tonight, mm. but like he's being told things by his attorney. So, um, I really hope, he's correct about those certain things, but, but also where, and I think we'll get it more into it later. Um, I don't know if he has like international attorneys or if he has like the best Romanian criminal attorneys, right? Mm. Because uh, just because he might, his attorneys think that he's okay on the Romanian charges I don't know if they're necessarily aware of the potential charges that can occur from the UK or from the United States, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, um, so basically, I was going to bring up a whole load of stuff on screen that we, we could go through. I don't now know if I'm going to do that because we've got some, some technical teething issues here. And whenever I bring anything up on screen, it kind of affects the the, the, the view. We want the viewers to be able to see your, your beautiful self, of course. So... I don't want to sort of uh, damage that, but there's been a couple of, obviously people are going to be aware probably what's happened, but but fundamentally what happened on Monday night, um, Andrew and Tristan Tate were asleep in their home in Bucharest in Romania. Um, obviously the, the ongoing trial is happening there, the ongoing investigation prior to the trial taking place for the, the things that they're being, you know, the charges that are being leveled against them there. Then they get a knock on the door, the police come round, they get taken out, they basically get taken and held, I believe held detained overnight in jail in Bucharest, and then they go before a judge. And basically what has happened is that the uh, police uh, in, in the United Kingdom, um, I believe it's the, half, uh, the Bedfordshire police, have um, asked for an extradition um, agreement to, to be made in order to bring them to the UK to answer further charges in the UK. Now, apparently what the UK was, were trying to do or what they wanted was to basically say, look, keep these guys in jail, um, you know, it, 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 on an ongoing basis, sort out your business here and then, and then we ship them back over to, to Romania. Now, that then apparently, that then didn't happen because it went before a judge and the judge took a look at it and she said, no, we're not going to detain them. I believe they're now under house arrest again, or at least they they certainly can't leave the country and they probably can't leave Bucharest, but they're not actually in jail anymore. So at least that didn't happen. But um, yeah, it, it, it does appear that the agreement has now been made that as and when the Romanian case is resolved, however that's going to go, um, they are then going to get extradited back to the UK and then they're going to have to face these further charges here. So, I mean... Uh, you know, it's it's uh, 
And I have to say, I mean, I watched them last night. They did a rumble live last night. And um, I mean, one thing you can say about about particularly particularly like Tristan, but also Andrew as well. I mean, they're, they're so stoical about this stuff, because really what you're looking at now is years potentially of crap, isn't it? You know, because they've got all of the stuff that's going to happen in Romania. God knows how long that's going to take. They may have to do jail time there. And then they're going to come back here and they're going to have to do the same thing here. I mean, it's it's a lot to to kind of take on, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a extremely heavy burden that they are carrying. Um, I find it very odd that the UK was attempting to extradite so quickly. And it and appears as if the um, as if the UK was trying to extradite before they had all of their prosecution in Romania settled. Um, yeah. The reason that they, they were denied based off what I read from some of some of what I read about the Romanian like judge is um and also i have looked at the romanian constitution there is a lot of like overlap with what you'd expect with the american constitution in terms of like innocent until proven guilty the right into an yeah. attorney um and so i would imagine that they'd have uh you know similar due process laws and essentially what the judge was saying is you can't extradite to uk before they finish the case here because they mm. have a right to talk to their attorneys, they have a right to go to court, they have a right to be there to give themselves the best defense available to them. And so um, yeah, and I, I don't even know why the UK bothered to try to extradite so early. And I think that's uh, something that the US is waiting to do, because I do anticipate the US to also attempt to extradite extradite later on. Really? It's, it's you know, yeah. really, or, or, or what on what basis? I mean, they because I I think they are U.S. citizens, I believe, or maybe they have dual citizenship. Right. I'm not sure, but because I think that well, I mean, I, I saw one of them re yesterday said I'm an American citizen, so I don't know if they have dual citizenship. But why do you think the U.S. might seek to do that? Specifically, because what you just pointed out, uh, they're uh, U.S. citizens, and some of the I was, as I was looking into this several months ago, um, U.S. citizen like try. Um, luring someone out of the U.S. to traffic them, and it's in itself is its own charge. And also, you're uh, not going to receive the double jeopardy because you're in you're uh, prosecuting under a new jurisdiction. And furthermore, it's a completely separate charge. So um, I, I do have fear for them in that capacity as well. Oh, because of course, yeah, you're right. Because of course, th this whole thing, well seemed to have been sparked off by that American girl, wasn't it? it was to do with that, wasn't it? Who claimed that she'd been what kept there against her will or something like that. And then that got refuted. And I thought that that had kind of been thrown out, if you like, but but perhaps not. I don't know. Like, well, I thought, I th I th even I... if it's thrown out. Yeah, even if it were thrown out in Romanian court, it's not we haven't even started the US process yeah. yet and, yeah. or and we just began the uk process so uh who knows um how many jurisdictions this um alleged crime has touched i mean so so it's it is unfortunate and heavy yeah i mean so like you you make a really interesting point about the extradition thing which i to be honest i mean i i hadn't even i didn't it hadn't really even occurred to me until you said it but it, it, it is odd i mean what there's an ongoing case in an, in another country and before it's even gone to trial, uh, you know, uh, uh, their, their original country comes along and says, hey, we want to bring these guys back. I mean, how did they think that was going to work out? Does that ever, has that ever, I've never, I've never heard of that happening before. Is that something that happens regularly? I mean, is that, it seems a very unusual thing I, to do. I, no, I have heard of countries uh, extraditing after another country prosecutes, but typically they do wait for them to, uh, finish their proceedings or they'll say, you know, we want to extradite after finishing proceedings. I mm. haven't seen a country from my knowledge, but then again, I don't have like any expertise in international law. So maybe it's something mm. more common than I recognize, but it's just something that like, I think of um, who's that one. I'm thinking of that one drug dealer in Mexico. I can't think of his name right now but from my recollection he was prosecuted in the united states and then extradited to mexico or vice versa and there was yeah. waiting there was patience and also with the united states getting because we have kind of 
I have more experience understanding like United States law. If of you, course, yeah. if you violate two different crimes, it, if you violate a crime in two different States, the States wait for each other very patiently. So mm, first yeah. they're prosecuted in one state and then they extradite and then they're prosecuted. in another yeah. state. But sometimes there is fighting among the States as to who gets to prosecute first, but usually that's settled and then they wait for them to, yeah. to finish. Yeah, well, one reason that has been put forward for why they chose to do it now, and bizarrely, this, I don't know if you've heard this, but this this it includes Aiden Ross, of all people, because um, Aiden Ross on a live stream said something al along the lines, I've seen the clip of it again, I, I probably won't bring it up now because it might mess up the stream, but he basically said something like he'd received a text from Andrew basically saying, hey, listen, we're not going to be in Romania for that much longer. Um, so if you want to come over and create content, come over for a week and let's do it. Cause it could be now or never. And he read out that message on a stream or he told his viewers about it. And that then sort of set alarm bells ringing that the Tates were looking to abscond from Romania, which, you know, they deny, they say that he misunderstood the text, but there is a sort of, I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory, but it, it, it certainly happened. Cause I've seen the clip and I've also seen now Aiden Ross doing an almost like not a retraction, but almost like an apology clip saying, Oh, you know, I'm sorry, I kind of messed up. I, uh, you know, whatever, I shouldn't really have said that. So I, but I don't know if that had bearing mm. on it or not. But certainly one of the legal firms in the legal firm involved in the UK said, basically, like, um, we had, uh, I oh, try and find the, the quote, but basically, you know, we, we feared that um, they were gonna try to escape Romania, and in which case, you know, they could be difficult to to, to catch so that might it kind of explain it but i even then it, 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 it still doesn't really make sense because it, until the point that they had escaped romania that then romania wouldn't be inclined to let them go anyway would they so i don't really i don't totally buy that right i i i find that whole situation weird i don't know um I find that whole situation very weird to just like you're I think you are allowed to rely on reliable hearsay okay. um, in a situation like that for uh, for uh, getting a case started, but like for indicting somebody. But I don't know why you would just rely on some streamers word and also mm. for the uk to rely on it and also i believe weren't they already on house arrest so i you would think that the if it, that were to happen the correct steps moving forward would be to for the uk government to talk to the romanian government and ensure that they have had their passports taken or ensure that there's some sort of um thing preventing them from leaving the country because also in the Romanian statute on sex trafficking, it specifically outlines that the Romanian government will work internationally with um, any other countries who are involved in the case and have a liaison at the ready. So you would think that the UK would have gone through said liaison and ensured that they didn't escape. And this seems like a, a drastic move that is also seems like it's trying to prevent the Tates from getting the proper due process that they deserve. They deserve yeah. to have representation by an attorney. They, turn, they deserve to be working with their attorney uh, and be out. Uh, I'm, if they're paying for bail, they deserve to be out on bail and to have the best uh, defense possible for them, which is, I yeah. believe, why their assets were returned to them on appeal. Well, I mean, so, yes, I mean, they're, they're sort of overall, I mean, I watched the the Rumble stream they did last night when they were talking about it. And basically they were obviously refuting all, all, all charges. They were saying this is all trumped up nonsense. The, the, the issue as well is these are all very old. The, the, there's been allegations in the UK around them for a, a long time. I mean, this, this goes back to, I think like 2012 or something like that. Um, certainly, um, there was a there was an allegation where I think two girls were involved, and it was when they investigated, it was found that the, the girls have been talking to one another via WhatsApp and sort of almost conspiring to like, oh, how can we take these guys down? Anyway, the UK at the time decided not to proceed with a criminal case because they felt that it wouldn't, you know, there wasn't enough evidence or it wouldn't it wouldn't you know go go through basically, and so it was dropped. 
And now what the Tates are saying is, well, hang on a minute, how come they're dragging up this this stuff from from years ago, all of a sudden again? Um, mm. Which does seem odd, although there there is some suggestion that there's some new there's some new charges here as well that have maybe come to light. But obviously, I th- I think like with with many of these cases, you know, there's obviously there's been a lot of public spotlight on these guys, um, and. It, it's possibly the case that more people have come forward, but I, I don't know. It just seems very odd to be dragging up stuff from literally from such a long time ago, really. Um, particularly when there's an ongoing case still happening in in another country. Yeah, no. I, the reason that they have very long statute of limits and the statute of limits um, have been increasing as laws have been written specifically for sexual survivors is because you don't want um people who have been you know sexually trafficked as children or as or someone who is sexually trafficked um or has anything similar any crime perpetrated against them that's similar while they're young um uh, they don't deserve to not get the justice simply because they were yeah cuz incapable of speaking you know what I mean? It's it's hard sometimes as a victim of something like that. It would be very difficult to come forward right away. And so you want to give them the utmost ability to come forward. But simultaneously, uh, the as allegations like that, as the distance increases, the ability to gather evidence for both sides diminishes. So how can you protect yourself uh, your entire life from these allegations from like for instance, like the Trump allegation and mm. um, all of these other allegations that are coming forward and um, uh, the Supreme Court justice allegation in the United States. Uh, that was a really big deal. Like all of these allegations from decades ago mm. um, are very hard to defend against. So I understand both both sides, but but also with the UK one, you said that they started to prosecute. I don't know where they started to drop the charges, but they could potentially invoke double jeopardy if well, I don't know, UK law. They yeah. Have- well, it says, but just on the other point, it says here, lawyers representing four women who accused Tate of rape and sexual assault said they wrote to UK police to request his detention over fears he would flee Romania. So, so there was this kind of apparently there was this thing in the air that people were worried he was going to leave Romania. But like you said, I don't know how realistic that is really, because for a start, presumably they've had their passports taken from them. I can't, I can't imagine, you know, <laughs> a bit of an oversight if they haven't. And even if they've got, I don't know, some kind of fake documentation or whatever. I mean, they're, they're incredibly recognizable figures. It would be quite hard for them to, to disappear mm-hmm. entirely. And also, interestingly, I actually, <laughs> I actually took, had a look at, the list of countries that don't extradite to the UK um, out of interest earlier. And I have to say, it's not a particularly attractive list of places, really. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe right, I don't know right. fewer places. I don't know. Just, just like I had heard that Brazil doesn't extradite to the US. I don't know if that's still the case, but certainly for the, the list for it's, it's places like like Iran. It's like North Korea. You know, it's not places that you're, you're necessarily going to want to go and hang out. I mean, like a lot of the the major countries around the world will, will apparently extradite back to the UK. So then there's the question of well, where would they actually go, even if the, even if they were looking to abscond. Now, prior to all of this kicking off, I think that they'd have plans to, you know, I think they were looking at Dubai as a place to sort of set up their their, their operations and everything else. Um, a, a lot of British people actually go to Dubai. It's a very popular kind of, you know, whatever. Um, but, but I was checking on that and Dubai also has an extradition policy to the UK. So even mm-hmm. if they'd have gone down that route, they'd have that that wouldn't have helped them either. So I don't really think I don't know. I mean it it seems like they're a bit stuck. I don't see how how they could realistically flee even if they wanted to. I uh right. I I think the whole right, they couldn't realistically flee even if they wanted to and um they they really they had the passports taken. There's nowhere to go without extradition um and also just their lifestyle like they're not the type who would be able in my opinion to just survive in the woods you know yeah. or survive and and also because like they'd have to, it's not like they could just blend into another part of society they would literally have to go off the grid because they are so recognizable um i don't see them you know 
catching food and making it themselves. Like they are used to a very cush lifestyle. So I, I don't, I think it's very, it's exceedingly silly, but furthermore, the whole thing just seems like a way to prevent them from receiving the due process that they deserve, as I said earlier. So if, if it wasn't, if the UK genuinely wanted them to receive fair due process and then um, be extradited back to the UK in a timely fashion, um, and they were concerned about the Tates, uh, possibly fleeing, then they should simply talk to um, the Romanian consulate, the one that, and um, whoever was put in charge as the mediator, which is specifically set out in the statute, is available for international crimes such as this, specifically for the crime that they're being charged with. So there's a liaison available for them to talk to. All of those four women who are uh, concerned about this are also capable of talking to said liaison mm. or victim's advocate. So I don't understand. And also, I don't know what the women's rights are. The United States, like each uh, state is coming out with victim's rights statutes. So not all 50 states, I don't believe has it, but there are certain things in the statutes. But I don't know if there's a victim's rights capability in the United K to require immediate extradition. I've never heard of such a thing. So mm. for to say that these women have so much say over uh, the process in which the UK is moving forward, I think is a bit silly. It just seems, once again, like a reason to make it more difficult for the Tates and prevent them from getting proper due process. Yeah. So which, yeah. Yes. So, so, so going down that route, and I suppose this this takes us off into a whole other direction, really. But I mean, do, I mean, then it depends, I suppose, how much you buy into the theories around. Okay, so this is actually some sort of coordinated attack, or it's 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 happening. You know that it's it, it's somewhat politically motivated, and I guess I don't, I don't know. I, I don't expect you to have the answer to that or not. But I mean. You can see why people, a lot of people, go down that that route, including the Tates themselves. You know, they're they're arguing. Look, basically, th so the Tates on their stream last night. Basically, they said, look, the case in Romania was collapsing; it was falling apart. They realised they weren't going to get us on the things they they wanted to get us on. So now the UK have thought, oh shit, because we really want to get these guys. We really want to take these these guys down. We better up our game. So now let let's let's us do something now because it looks like they're not going to get charged in in the UK. And of course the Tates say this is all because of our voice and, and our message and what we have to say and so on and so forth. So it's all politically motivated. I, I mean I don't know what if you have any thoughts yeah. on that. I agree that it's very likely politically motivated, but even if it's politically motivated, I just think it's bad uh, optics for the United Kingdom. I think uh, it would have been better optics for let them be prosecuted in Romania. If that prosecution fails, go through the proper extradition process. They would have gone immediately from winning their lawsuit in Romania to being extradited into a new lawsuit in UK, in which... Um, from my understanding, there's certain pieces of evidence that will not be admitted in Romanian courts mm. that potentially could be admitted in the UK courts and the United States courts. So I'm not sure if the UK is concerned about them having a um, like a W, you know, having like, oh, OK, well, they won in the Romanian courts and therefore the uh, public opinion is on their side. And it, if that's what they're concerning for, that's why they would try to extradite right away. Mm -hmm. But um, if they don't care about the political opinion, they just want, you know, proper due process and to uh, properly try them in the Romanian process and then the UK process, they would have just waited. So for yeah, or at least put out extradition extradition orders and saying, "Hey, we want to extradite after yeah. you conclude." Yeah, with. yeah, which is kind of you know, which is kind of ended up in practice being being what's happened anyway. But I mean, like I say, I mean, God knows now what's how it's going to go because you know, the the trial and the the whole process in Romania could take ages. It probably will, and then they could end up serving time in in Romania, and then presumably after that happens, they'll still have to come back here and do the whole thing again here, right? So, you know, they'll do jail time. And then, and then in the United States. 
and he and does the United States. And also I'm concerned is because uh, according to some of something that I have heard, I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but the Romanian courts aren't going to be taking in a lot of what they say on their Rumble channel or on their X currently after the charge, like after they receive the charges. But once again, that's not how the United States courts work. That's not how the UK courts work, from my understanding. I don't have any knowledge in UK courts. Mm. Um, but so I, I'm concerned that anything that they say on Rumble, anything that they say uh, on the stand, anything that they say in depositions, any will can and will be used against them in the United yeah. States courts and potentially the UK courts. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting one. What, what do you think about that, really? Because like it's, it's kind of... The, the classic advice, I'm sure, would always be from any lawyer, I would imagine, would be, well, just shut up and don't say anything because you, you might incriminate yourself. And and the Tates have obviously, I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, the Tates have always kind of gone the opposite. And and in, in a way, it's sort of admirable because they've gone on to Rumble, they've gone on to X, and they've said, hey, this is bullshit. And they've very eloquently and very loudly stated their side of the story, which is kind of, you know whatever you think of them, whatever anyone thinks of them, it's kind of quite ballsy in a way, because I think a lot of people would have just been like, oh, shit, I better shut up now in case I say something wrong. Um, but I mean, as, as a, you know, so, as somebody who's, a, you know, a, a passed the bar in Arizona, etc. I mean, what, what, are, what are you, what would you advise somebody in that situation to, to do? There are particular cases in which a defendant is being completely railroaded by the justice system or whatever, in which some attorneys do rec recommend that, that they might, you know, get their voice out there so that they could get like the public opinion on their side. Because as much as the public opinion shouldn't sway the legal process, it unfortunately does many a time. Mm. So, for instance, um, I've heard. I heard Candace Owens say to um, Derek Chauvin's attorneys that they should be coming out more publicly with their side of the story. Yeah. Uh, the the man who uh, killed George Floyd, or allegedly killed Floyd, mm. George Floyd, was charged with killing. So, um, and then also I'm thinking about, I don't know if you know Turtle Boy, or if I told you about this one case, there's this woman named Karen Reed, who was accused of killing a boston police officer but according to her defense it's actually a group of boston police officers and their family members at a party and uh they killed him at the party and then and then um framed karen the right. girlfriend mm. uh so in that situation it's good to have press out there and to have to encourage the fbi to look into it and since then the fbi has looked into it and uh and it has helped karen's case quite a mm. bit so there are times in which it in which you're getting if you feel like you're being railroaded by the government maybe it's a good time to to publicly speak about it so that the government feels pressure to get their act together and to cross their I's and dot their T's. But it's a little bit different when you have different rules of evidence and a lot of, and you have three separate countries and uh, you're not, you're already a public figure and not only a public figure, a controversial public figure with people who want to see your demise. So people are gonna be nitpicking everything you say, but also, yeah. also, from my understanding, the Tates believe, from my understanding, the Tates believe that anything that they say right now on Rumble or X or what have you is not going to be used against them in court, in Romanian court. Because uh, I don't know the rules of evidence of Romanian law. So I think that's all, another reason that they're being so verbose and talking so much about their case is because they believe nothing can be used against them but that doesn't apply to anything in the united states or the U uk so yeah um, um what is it in this what in, in the u.s would or is it state by state in the u.s whether people take it into account or not you know if you said something contentious or not no uh, the miranda rights and I'm, I'm pretty sure miranda rights are the same state by state or maybe they're but it's anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law right okay so yeah yeah well that's certainly a phrase yeah that, that's certainly a phrase that gets used in the uk all the time so i would imagine 
that applies across social media as as well. But I mean, at the same time, though, like you said, I mean, it's it's the one the one thing they they've got a very powerful marketing machine, and obviously because they've got such a huge following and et cetera, et cetera, and they are very good at what they've done very successfully is they put their side of the story across, and they've convinced you know, and they've convinced a, a lot of people that their side of the story is the correct one, that this is corrupt, that this is, um, you know, essentially the matrix or the elites or whatever you want to call it, you know, doing this politically motivated thing. Um, you got to hand it to them. I mean, in terms of like PR and being able to shape the narrative, they've done that incredibly skillfully. Although obviously there's a lot of people who, who you know, dislike them intensely as well. You know, you've got the schools banning them here in the UK and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's a very interesting dichotomy, especially because uh, for the average person, if they were going through a legal situation that like you would tell them, get off the Internet, get off Facebook, get off YouTube, get off whatever, especially if they're they're not super famous. Mm. Like if they just have like a, you know, a couple thousand followers or whatever, they're really small. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Get off the Internet. But here are the Tate's ent entire income relies off their public persona, their public image. And with content creation, content creation requires feeding the algorithm and to be consistent with it. Yeah. So if they could completely give up their careers in which they've been successful at, which would make it very difficult to pay for all of these attorneys that they're going to have to pay for. So it, it's a very interesting spot that they're in where yeah. they, well, they have to kind of keep the, the money coming and to pay for these attorneys and, um, they might be encouraged to stay quiet simultaneously in order to avoid yeah. having records. Isn't it? Yeah. It's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting one. I mean, I do think that there's, there's also, I think, I think that is plays into it for sure, because obviously they've got a, you know, that that they're, they're, they're now obviously facing huge costs for all of this stuff. But at the same time, I think there is a, a matter of principle here and they're just like, no, this is bullshit. And they want to, they want to say that loudly and proudly. And I think in a way there's something quite, sort of striking about their their willingness to do that when I think a lot of other people would crumble under the pressure, you know? Um, although, I don't know, were you familiar with the, the the Russell Brand allegations that happened in the UK recently? I don't know if you know much about that. Uh, I saw it briefly when it came out and then I haven't looked into it since. Yeah, I mean, it's a kind when of... the allegations first... There's a kind of kind of Started. similar yeah, similar sort of thing with him in a way. I mean, you're talking about sort of uh, ac accusations of like, like let's say sexual misconduct that go back, you know, quite, quite a long time now. And um, you know, there, there's certainly I think there's four or maybe five, you know, specific ones that are you know being examined or whatever. And I mean, he's been fairly. I mean, I don't watch his content a lot, to be honest, but I mean, the bits I've seen bits of him being fairly, you know, just just forthright and certainly not backing down and getting off of Rumble or anything like that. You know, certainly still being on Rumble and just carrying on with his show and just carrying on business as usual and just sort of being like, I mean, I've seen him. I saw him do at least one video where he said, look, you know, this is what happens. This is when you, you know, speak the truth. And I mean, his his version of speaking the truth is a bit different to the Tate's because he's a little bit more. You know, it's it's more like anti big pharma and a bit more of the you know the 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 that kind of conspiratorial let's say stuff, but you know he 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 just says, look, I mean, this is the classic way that people try to take you down. Um, you say something that the the authorities, the people in charge, don't like, and they hit you with you know charges of a sexual nature, and that blackens your reputation and makes you almost a pariah. And um, you know, now, as far as I know, I don't think he's actually been officially charged yet with anything. So it, it's with I, I don't know why that is. But, you know, um, it's 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 kind of a similar thing in a, in, a, in a way. I think it's really interesting. Like we're living in this age now for the first time, unless you were like unless you like owned a newspaper or something like that, or you were I don't know, you were you were a TV celebrity or something like that. Like nobody would have, would have had the, the platform to speak out back against allegations coming to, to you, would they really? And now suddenly some of these figures do if they're big enough, which is kind of fascinating. Yeah, the the Me Too movement was really interesting in how it really did awaken people's eyes to, okay, there is too much um, essay going on, there is too much sexual assault going on. But simultaneously, uh, the pendulum swung very quickly to the opposite direction where, where, okay, there's also a lot of false allegations going on and we need a better process in... Um, preventing these allegations from harming people's reputations and their lives permanently. And 
with the Russell Brand situation, though, he's not talking about the specifics of the case, is he? I don't, or yeah. if there is a, if there isn't even a case yet. Yeah, from my understanding, he's just continuing his life as normal. He like mm. addressed, hey, uh, it's not true. And this is something that they do to tarnish reputations. And then he moved on, which is different than the Tates who give details about how they're about their opinions on the case, about how they believe they're not guilty, about what these women did, about the mm. accusations. So it's, it is very different. Um, uh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it's very different. Yeah, no, no, you're you're right. You're right. I should also actually probably I should have said earlier for just for for pure transparency. I mean, I have met both of them um, largely through doing interviews. Like I've done a couple of interviews with Andrew. I've met Andrew a couple of times um, in person, and I've done like a like a, at least one like Zoom kind of thing like this with him. I've met Tristan a few a few times, maybe maybe a couple more times than Andrew. I've always. Um, um, you know, I guess I found uh, Tristan. Um, I've really always really got up, kind of got on quite well with Tristan. I think he's a real gentleman. He's always been well, certainly to me. He's always been very gentlemanly. In fact, both of them have. Um, you know, I've been in their presence uh, when they've been there've been other people there, and including women there, and they've always been very, you know, very very polite and very respectful and very you know generous and and everything else that you would you would expect. And I also actually, as it happens, I I know a, a couple of women who have had various dealings with them um, and and both of them, you know, speak highly of them as well, you know, for, for what that's worth. I mean, obviously none of that relates to the specific charges that, that we're talking about here, but that's just my, my personal experience. It's funny. It's kind of funny because I was getting some, I got, I got, I triggered a load of um, anti tape, you know, tape haters um, on uh, X, uh, X earlier because I was listening to a stream by somebody called Murdered by Crayons who talks about all this stuff and he talks about it from an anti tape perspective and a lot of their haters were coming at me going uh -huh. like uh, going like oh you know you must be so worried now Troy you're like oh fucking hell you know what's your involvement with all this were you a middleman and all that I'm like no I've like I've interviewed the, the, the dude like, like like if I'm in trouble then so is Piers Morgan and so is Tucker Carlson do you know what I mean I've done a couple of interviews with them you know but it's um. I, I just say that for transparency, but you know, at the same time, um, I, 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 with all of these things, I think I think due process just needs to take its course, doesn't it? And the problem, this fucking Romanian thing, one of the problems is it's taken so bloody long, um, which is very frustrating. Court cases take while. <sighs> I, I mean, it's, it takes it seems to take long for the media because the media is so fast and also because we're watching all of these Trump trials go so quickly. Yeah. But, um, but so we're just like, why can't this trial go fast? But, um, I mean, trials take forever. Trials yeah. take a lot. If you want proper due, pro in fact, uh, I, in fact, I have, a, I have a stalker actually, or there's, there's a man who stalked me out in Boston. Mm. That was like four years ago. And he's still being prosecuted. And that's just a really simple case, like super yeah. simple. It's one dude, like one chick, you know, uh, like it should be done by now. And that's been like three or four years. And it's and so, of course, this is a much, 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 much longer process with many pretrial hearings and so like thousands and thousands of pages and videos and of evidence and i just i don't even know it's going to take forever to sort through it all mm. so of course it'll take years yeah yeah it, it should take years do you think i mean do, do you think it would take years in the states as well because i think there's a i think there could be a perception because i think people in the u.s particularly and, and maybe in england to some extent they think oh romania is this kind of like you know it's this kind of backward country and everything's very archaic i mean it it really isn't or at least i mean i don't know a lot about the legal system there either but certainly i've been to bucharest a few times very modern very you know it's an it's an eu country the economy's doing pretty well now there i think you know it's it's kind of like i i i don't i think people can have a view of these countries because it's not the us they think oh it's that's why it's taking so long but this process probably wherever they were doing it i imagine would be quite elongated uh who's who's saying that romania is a third back it's it's considered a first world country correct yeah no i, I think it is no i'm not i'm not i don't know nobody specifically uh, but I, I've, I've seen a little bit of that kind of feeling okay. around you know 
No, I mean, I didn't really know much about the Romanian legal process. I started uh, getting interested in this Tate stuff. I haven't really made videos about it, but, you know, talked to Tristan a bit and uh, thought he was a nice enough dude that I like, you know, got interested and looked into his situation a little bit. Uh, not that I could give legal advice, especially as a non-Romanian attorney. Mm. But um, upon doing so, it seems like they have a legal system that's exceedingly similar to the United States legal system in terms of like having a right to the attorney, having like your basic rights seem to be very similar. So right. you, it, I would imagine it would be very similar with the due process rights, which would be ensuring which evidence can come in, which evidence can't come in, mm. uh, when, what witnesses will be heard and do it like this entire pro this is going to be a very lengthy process. Uh, it's especially with the amount of allegations, the number of people involved, the um, the amount of evidence that they have is just going to be so overwhelming. And then digging through that evidence and then having experts and having uh, to dig through all of the didn't they seize the computers and the phones? Yeah, they did. Yeah. So it yeah. takes a while to. Yeah, so it takes a while to do data analysis. I don't know what the data analysis process is like in Romania. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there, it's just going to be such a long process. Do you know the date that they were officially charged in Romania? I don't. I don't, to be honest. I really, I, I, I don't. Um, but this has been. Do you know, like, approximately how many years? Well, I mean, they got arrested. Was it? Um... <sighs> I guess it was the Christmas before last. It was around then, so maybe it's been just over a year. Um, but I don't That's even nothing. know. I don't. I mean, on 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 the technical point, I don't even actually know if they were charged then or or not. I mean, they were they were sort of. Again, it's about the subtleties of their system. They would they were brought in and they said, right, we think you know there's 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 a lot of stuff against you. We're holding you for a period of time while we look into this. I don't know whether specific charge. I mean, I think at the moment, as far as as much as I understand it, it's pre-trial. But the date for a trial will be put in probably fairly soon, probably this year at some point. But I don't whether they've actually hopefully. Yeah, well, hopefully, but whether they've specifically even been charged with anything yet, or, or if, if all of the charges have been delineated yet, I actually don't know. Um, and I think that's what's frustrating. I think they have received charges. Mm. I, I I thought I did remember seeing specific charges, like remember looking up the statute for a specific charge. Um, and it, what was really interesting about that charge is like, for instance, when many people think of like human trafficking or sex trafficking, they have this idea of mind of like taken from the movie, yeah, you know, yeah, that movie yeah. taken. Mm. Um, they 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 have this idea in their mind of like literally physically taking someone, but the the statute's extremely loose. So the statute's essentially like coercing coercing someone or in encouraging someone to come to a new location and then mm. uh, making it difficult for them to leave yeah. by force or apparent force or coercion or fraud. And so they can use a lot of like, okay, well, they said that they, uh, and then um, the lover being boy a lover thing. boy. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it really was like a part of the statue about like pretending to be um, in a romantic relationship to entice somebody like by means of deception so it's like man holy crap that is a loose statute that covers that it, it's not something that i would anticipate that would be considered human trafficking but under the statute that's a very concerning so, well so, yeah um yeah can, so can, can i i mean i was gonna i wanted to ask you about this because obviously as a, as a woman i mean it's fair to say that you're kind of right leaning i think you're fairly you're a conser fairly conservative however you are also a woman obviously and that's probably gonna have some obviously <laughs> well sorry i shouldn't assume i didn't i don't want to assume you're gender, I actually but... identify <laughs> as he him oh do you so okay i, 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 apolo I, apolo I apologize i apologize take this take the stream now we'll have to go to rumble now i'll get chunks off youtube um but but um <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Regardless of your gender, what's, what's your view on this? Because um, it it does, you know, it does seem incredible. Like the lover boy thing, it does seem incredibly loose, and it seems like you could almost get mm. into trouble. I mean, yeah, can work. Okay, that's got a certain stigma attached. But what if I had a girlfriend, and I was like, "Hey, babe, listen, I really love you. I want to move to Romania, and I want to open like an antique shop. Come with me, and 
you know, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's do this antique shop together. And then we do it. And then the business fails and she gets fed up with me. Could she then say, oh, he was like coercively controlling me. Like, like it, it's, it, it seems extremely subjective that, at best. With that statue, you, okay. So you'd have, I think you would have to show that you weren't actually romantically interested in the person. So like, for instance, <laughs> like, uh, cause that, there was like some fraud along mm. with the lover boy thing. And so, um, but even if you were, so like the situation that you pointed out, like you're have a fiance, bring her girl mania, open an antique shop. Are you forcing her to work at the antique shop? Are you preventing her from leaving by taking the funds of the antique shop and not? Yeah. So maybe you're in a traditional type marriage or such a uh, re relationship situation where the man would handle the finances maybe. So like, let's say you're handling the finances. I could see that potentially under this statute meeting all of the elements required. So like the way that you look at a law as an attorney, there's either elements or factors. Okay. So if there's elements, it means you need to, you need the prosecution needs to show every single part of the statute in order to succeed. If there's factors that they just need to show most of the parts. Yeah. Um, so this one was an element statute. So the prosecution will need to show every single part so that there was fraud, that they were forced to do work, that you made it difficult for them to leave or co right. coerce them not to leave. Okay. And, so yeah. the burden, okay, so the, 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 I guess the burden of proof for that is quite fairly high then, really, because I mean, I, yeah. like, I, I mean, if, if, if I had to, if I had to guess, I mean, I, don't, I like I said, I, I, don't, I don't know the intimate details of any of this stuff, but if I had to guess, I, I suspect that probably my understanding of it was that when they started to get into the, to, to getting girls to do cam work and stuff, they were basically their girlfriends, you know, now how, how deeply in love with these women they were is, is another thing, but they were sort of, you know, they were having intimate relations with them. They were like, okay, Hey girls, why don't we do this? We can make some money, blah, blah, blah. Now I think a lot of people, then they hear about this statue and they think, well, well, hang on a minute. That doesn't sound that unreasonable. I suppose you're right. It becomes unreasonable if, you know, then it's proven, okay, somebody's then locked her up for 10 hours a day and she only gets, you know, 30, 30 cents for, a, you know, for an hour or something like that, I guess. But they're going to have to meet all of those, those elements of proof in order to, to get this through, right? Yeah, but yes, they're going to have to get show all of the elements in order to get it through. Um, but the elements are, the elements are very open and loose mm. and open to interpretation. I mean, That's what I'm concerned about. Mm. It's similar in the United States where they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, I remember seeing that in the Romanian. I don't remember if that's the exact verbiage. That's definitely the United States verbiage. But I did see something along those lines about they have to prove like to a reasonable extent. But it's open. It's easy to coerce hey, saying, hey, I really want you here because I really care about you. Co that is coercion. Check. You met that element. You He's, know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you you uh, kept, they asked you to hold your passport in their purse. You kept their passport. Check. You prevented them from leaving. You know, it, it could be very easy to show some of the statutes and then they had to worry about the ones that are more on the fence. But then you have somewhat of a non-lenient judge or you have somewhat of um a bad reputation or the court system is somewhat against you a little bit, then it's that, that borderline fence sitting stuff that becomes very scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, it links in with something that I don't know if you're aware, but recently in the UK, so the, um, the definition of abuse, we were talking, I was talking about this. So I was on a, actually on a show with Pearl, what fresh and fit were over here and we did, we, we were all on a show together and, and this came up because the, the definition of domestic abuse in the UK has now been expanded so that it includes things like what they call coercive control and financial abuse or whatever, however they term that. So basically, oh, you know, he stopped me from spending my money. But co I mean, and look, I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't toxic and controlling relationships that happen and the bad shit happens and that, that, that you know, I'm not, I'm not letting every man off the hook or, or anything like that. But at the same time, it does trouble me that a lot of this stuff seems so subjective and hard to prove. And um, 
I mean, I guess, I, you know, and I guess the laws apply both ways. So theoretically, a guy could accuse a woman of coercive control as well. But I mean, we, we know we all know the reality is that generally speaking, this is kind of aimed at protecting women. And generally speaking, women tend to be believed more than guys. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, do you think... Um, <laughs> I would actually disagree and say that coercive control and financial control actually well opens the gates more for men than for women. Uh, because it's physical control is much easier for men, whereas mm. coercive control, financial control are, are things that women are capable of doing as well. Um, yeah. But I, I guess it also expands the gates of like the types of men who could be controlled, especially because there are more men. Here's what I, here's the issue. You're correct. You shouldn't let every man off the hook. And it is good that some of this is allowed in because there are situations of financial abuse that are really bad. So for instance, um, guy makes all the money, woman is stay at home mom. And then the guy wants to do like, you know, oh, he wants to just blow off the family. He could just shut off the credit cards, go mm. out to Vegas, have a spend as much time as he, and I actually know a couple of situations like that. So for instance, there's this one stat that red pillars love to use like, Oh, well, wi uh, women initiate 80% of divorces. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause that's like, that's because a huge portion of them is because the man just like goes and leaves. And so the only way that the woman could start receiving you know, any sort of alimony or start receiving her portion of the divorce proceedings or start receiving child support is to initiate the divorce proceedings. The man left, but the woman has to init okay, initiate the legal proceedings to receive. So there is real reason to add coercive control and financial control to the statute. However, those absolutely will be abused to uh, say like, a guy wouldn't give a girl an, a, a weekly allowance that she wanted. She'll call it financial abuse. Yeah. So it absolutely will be. I think it absolutely will be abused, but it is needed. So in cases like this, it's really important that the people who write the statutes are extremely particular in their language. And I don't know uh, how UK law works. I'm pretty uh, I don't know if you're common law or not, but like uh, like if you go on or if like, you use if you live uh, precedent in order to make your law? Uh, no, precedent. Yeah, precedent is, is used, yeah. Okay, so you're just going to have to have like a lot of cases, right? Mm. You just need to start using this law a lot and for the legal system to kind of hammer out what is actually considered coercive control and financial abuse versus what is just typical yeah. marital because it's kind of you, you, you could almost you, you you could almost see and, and and maybe this is me catastrophizing it because I'm a guy and also I kind of I'm involved with this space so we talk about this crap all the time but you know you could see this being abused in almost like like a what would be seen as a traditional mm -hmm. romantic relationship so you know a guy gets a wife he's like hey listen babe I'm going to take care of the finances you know don't worry about joint bank account I'll look after you I'll just I'll just do everything it's fine you know, you can stay, you can stay at home, but actually, you know, I, I actually, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with you going to the club on Friday nights because, you know, girls night and stuff like that. It just makes me feel a bit bad that that could all be done, you know, in a fairly innocent sort of a way, really, if that makes sense. But then she could then for whatever reason, you know, get, get tired of the guy or, or, or three years later decide she doesn't like him anymore. And then she could say, well, look, that was coercive and financial control when actually, it, it, it's it's more just it was a sort of a the the way a traditional relationship may well have worked say 25 or 30 years ago right you, you know what i'm saying absolutely i absolutely think that will it's one of those gray spaces whenever you're talking about uh you know sexual crimes or uh issues relationship type crimes there it tends to be a lot of gray space uh when it comes to like what is consent and what is um what is coercion and there's it's difficult to navigate through so i think there will be um unfortunately people who suffer due to the statute possibly unduly um but it, I, it you have to, it's with every statute you need like a balance of uh or with any law you need a balance of if it's going to help more than it's going to hurt if it's going to mm. help the public more than it's going to hurt so there's absolutely a need in my opinion, to 
protect people who are in a financially abusive and coercively controlled relationships. But then again, you're you're going to have to sacrifice a certain number of people uh, to the situation that you're talking about, which is extremely unfortunate because I'm of the belief that I would rather have a uh, hundred free man goes and one innocent man go to jail. That's just my opinion. Um, and also that should be the basis of like any good legal system. Um, but you have to do a balance. And so maybe a thousand men isn't worth one. So, so what, sorry, just say, that, say, just, just say that again. So you'd rather have like, you, you'd rather minimize the number of innocent men who, who accidentally go to jail. Is that what you're saying? Or who go to jail unfairly? You'd rather minimize. Right. That. Of course. So like, so by creating coercive control, and financial, including to uh, expand the definition to include coercive control and financial control, uh, you are going to have a certain number of men unjustly punished, but, but it, then... it's so like, let's say, let's say it, three men are unjustly punished, but then thousands of people, men and women, sorry, let me help my dog really quick. Thousands of men and women are protected because of it. So it's yeah. like, what's the payoff? So like you need to figure out what, what that balance mm. is, but maybe if it's like, but if like a hundred men are going to be hurt due to this expansion and only like 200 people are protected due to this, then it's not worth it. So uh, you need to find that balance. And we're going to see, I think this is just kind of a time period thing. We're going to have to wait and see if the statute is abused and yeah. too loose and written mm. poorly. Yeah, what's happening in the states is, I mean, again, I guess it's state by state. But is, is are you seeing something similar over there with with this kind of thing? You did. So I, I actually had a debate on this once with Jasmine Jafar, and I at the time I said that I believed that the states was changing a lot of statutes, but since then I couldn't find. Um, a ton of definitional changes in the statutes like I thought that there were I saw like a couple of schools like public schools like the UC schools change their the definition of rape but I haven't seen anything change in the statute definition uh, mm. not that I have seen no fair enough would you would you say generally I mean this Obviously, you're you're less familiar with UK law, but I mean, in the states, is is the the for for say rape or sexual assault is the is the standard of proof quite high? Because if we're getting these cases where it was twelve years ago, and then she said, you know, oh, he kind of pushed me up against a wall, and this happened, and it's very there's not really any physical evidence there, and so on and so forth. I mean, like how how do many convictions happen on that on that kind of basis, or is it? very hard to actually prove those cases uh it is really difficult to prove these cases which is why sexual assault survivors also frequent uh choose not to come out because they know if a lot of them realize going through the court system is very difficult and also not particularly worth it mm. so um you have to prove all this you have to pr prove beyond a reasonable doubt right, that yeah. this person had not only had sex with you but had sex with you against your will and this is very difficult to do um mm. exceedingly and then even if you do do it uh often the charges aren't as high as you would like like when you're when you go through that you would anticipate your abuser to go to jail for like 20 years 30 years life and often it's maybe five to 10 years. And so okay. then, yeah. you know, maybe they go away for five years and then they get out with good time. So they only went away for three years and then, okay, you know, the guy that you, you went through that entire process just for him to live his life again. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's tricky stuff, but you, it sounds like you're coming down more on the side because people would argue I've heard a lot of people on the like on the male side, they would say, well, look, you know, this thing's happened 12 years ago. If it was that bad, why why wasn't it, you know, reported sooner? Why wasn't it brought to the attention? You know, surely, mm -hmm. you know, she should have acted more quickly and why wait all that time and blah, blah, blah. It sounds like you're coming down slightly more on the side of, 
well, actually, sometimes it takes people time to process these things. And it's fair to have, you know, a longer kind of timeline that they can bring the complaint forward. Or do well, you think there should be a limitation? I there's, yeah, well, there is a limitation. There is a statute of limitations on it. Um, actually, I don't know. I think some of the states are making it so that there's no statute of limitations for child crimes. Mm. Um, that being said, though, I... I understand both points of view. I agree with the with the man, if, especially like the longer time that elapses between the time of the allegation and the the alleged incident, then it's it, it makes it more. There's more excuses for. I'm just going to say the woman, even though mm. it could be a man or a woman who's the victim. Um, even though the woman, there's all that time. She now it gives her more of an excuse. Oh, of course I don't have. The clothes that I wore that night, it was 10 years ago. Of course, I don't have the bed sheets. It was 10 years ago. Of course, I don't have the recollection perfectly. It was 10 years ago. So you have a lot more excuses for the person making the allegations to not have evidence, um, mm. which dismisses a lot of the arguments for the alleged uh, abuser. Right. But simultaneously, I also understand why it takes a while to come forward because you're scared of the legal system, you're scared of the repercussions, you were a child, you uh, you don't have the knowledge, perhaps, to know that something happened against you because you're mm. not sophisticated enough to realize. So, yeah, it, I see both sides of the coin. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. just an unfortunate situation. It's a tricky, yeah, it's a very difficult one. And it's not one I think is, is, is very easy to solve. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, a boilerplate like Red Pill Manosphere take on it would be, I guess, you know, it's becoming a lot more unfair on men and it's, be, it's becoming a lot more risky for men because men can effectively years later get accused of, you know, just, just the woman suddenly decides that she takes dislike to you or in the case of maybe a celebrity or somebody who's, you know, earned, earned a lot of money. They might think, well, maybe there's a civil proceeding here. I can get some cash, and so I think I, th I think from the hardcore sort of m masculine red pills side of things, they would say, well, actually, the environment has become a lot more hostile towards men. But I mean, you know, I I, I take your point as well. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's like, how do you address how do you address that balance? Really, I'm I'm not sure there's a perfect answer to it. To be honest, um, I do think yeah, that it, it's carry on. Sorry. No, it's just gray. Go ahead. What do you think about anonymity, though? Because one of the things, one of the issues we have here, certainly in the UK, is that, you know, somebody can get accused of all of this stuff and it seems like their name is published all over the place and their reputation is basically in tatters, regardless of, you know, what actually ends up happening. Whereas the victims... Are, really? Are, yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, like say, say with Russell Brand, for example. So Russell Brand, and, and there wasn't, even with Russell Brand, I mean, basically it was a journalistic um investigation so it was basically journalists you know i think i think it was the bbc or channel 4 who did it and they spent you know a long time interviewing these people they did this investigation and then they basically did a big documentary about russell brand with these women who were using false names or not having a name at all or having actresses play them basically making these allegations now it's gone to the to the police and the police are you know looking into it but essentially it seems like they could name Russell Brand as sort of like, oh, he he's this kind of predator and everything else with before the due mm. process has even happened. And obviously the women now, you know, the women are have anonymity. And I'm not saying I, I personally feel like both sides should have anonymity until the thing's been hashed out in court, really. Um, I don't know what you think. Well, I mean, I think that's just a journal. I think that's just a journalist thing, because I think I don't think did the courts open openly name Russell Brand or did a journalist dig into it and find out that Russell Brand was accused? Because from my understanding, the UK does have anonymity and my specifically for perpetrators of sexual crimes, um, in my opinion, too much. There's, is, there's, is there a sex registry in the UK? No, the, from the, my understanding, there is no sex. No, the, 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 there is, there but is there, sex there is, but once you, once you've been convicted, like once you've been convicted and you know charged and you've been you know whatever, then you would get put on the register. Um, but but that's after the judicial process has taken place. You know, you see that that's what I'm saying. My, yeah. Um... That's what I'm saying. My my problem with the Russell Brand thing was it's it, it seems to me that 
No, Please. that's not true. If uh, there is no public sex offenders registry in the UK. Oh. Just look it up. And this is something that I have a major issue with because if you look up uh, the there's sec several um, foundations in the United States that I think are ran by pedophiles. Sorry, I don't know if you it's by PDF well, files. Yes, yes. And um. Uh, and they are ran by people who come from the UK and Australia specifically because there's no registry list. And so they can run these American businesses while keeping their, um, their name clean. So like, for okay. Uh, there's a organization called the Prostasia foundation okay. and they are based in San Francisco. You should look them up. They help, pedophile there are pdf files they help they are a map support group organization um they they are very open about trying to help people who are attracted to children and um they hold on they are directly situated so like if you look at prostasia foundation you go to their contact page mm. and then you look up their address because they have the address they are directly across the street from an elementary school so i was Jeez. like how in the world can someone purchase property directly across from an elementary school when they're most likely on a registry list so i looked up the people who run prostasia foundation and they're all from the uk and australia so there's no there's no registry hmm. so they could have done something and then they just come here and then they start a map support group and it, it very much bothers me i actually went there in person once and checked out the yeah. um yeah checked out the uh elementary school checked out the headquarters of the prosasia foundation and it's just like right there and the and the elementary school is like all open it's a chicken wire fence that surrounds it and it's like kids play outside they're all visible from the street so you can watch from the headquarters of the office jesus creepy what and their main thing is you know to to, to what like to sort of advocate for for people who are, you know, uh, you attracted, know attracted to children, children. Yeah. Jesus. How do you spell it? Prostasia. P R O S T A S I A Foundation. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So some. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so somebody said in the comments, um, there is. I. Um, I think there, there, there is a UK register, but maybe it's not public. And then somebody else has said it's not public. So I think they're correct, actually, because I did a Google. You're right. It says it says that there's. I think there. It, it seems weird. I, I think there is a register, but nobody can actually look at it. And then and then it looks like there's a kind of some people have made like unofficial websites where they've named a load of people on there, but it, but that's not actually a government thing. So it's a sort of a. So so yeah, I mean you know that seems odd that I thought there was a public one, but, but apparently right. not um yeah so I, I don't know how accessible it is for the public to see if, if the registration list then um there is a registry in australia but once again i don't think that's open for the public it's mm. quite anonymous so when it comes to the russell brand stuff that just sounds like journalists spouting off and also i don't i don't know uh the defamation like the libel well, and slander laws of the UK. Well, apparently, apparently he had a pretty like hefty, as you would imagine, like a pretty you know aggressive sort of legal team around him, and apparently they were sending you know they were warning people off for a long time, basically saying don't don't say anything about it because because they I, I think they knew this was brewing for a, for a while, and they were kind of warning people off. But I think maybe I don't know maybe maybe legally you can get around it by just saying look the story is there are allegations against Russell Brand. There are, these women have come forward and they've made these allegations and that is the story. And they're not lying because if the, those women have come forward, that's that's true. But the difficulty, of course, is if it then goes to trial, say, and it turns out that Russell Brand's actually innocent of all of this, then his name's been blackened, you know, and, he, you know, he he's had no recourse against it, really. So... Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's something like that. Maybe that's how they go around it. Yeah, I. it's hard because I'm very much a First Amendment advocate. So I do think people should be allowed to know like, this guy has been accused of something, mm. uh, though he is innocent until proven guilty. Um, even if it does, you know, 
the media is allowed to talk about ongoing court cases mm. typically. So, or so it, you don't want to suppress the media. I think there are certain countries. I thought possibly Portugal. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Mm. But there are certain countries that gag the media from talking about ongoing court cases to do what you're doing to prevent um, defendants from unjust tarnishing is specifically or like especially if they may be found to be not guilty later on um but simultaneously it's it's that balance in the law do you want to gag journalists mm. at the um in order to help defendants or do you want to optimize freedom of speech um at the expense of defendants yeah. it's it's one of it's another gray area in, in the law yeah no that's that is that is a fair point actually um and I don't, I don't really know what the answer to that to that is. I mean, it just seems, it seems terribly unfair that somebody's life could be ruined on what might be, you know, baseless accusations. But you're, but at the same time, you're right. Otherwise, we end up, you know, like if the press has no freedom, then where do we end up then? You know, not not in a good place. Do you think? All right, what about this? Do you think if, say, a woman or or a man, to, to be fair, if somebody brings forward an accusation of a, of a sexual nature? And then it's disproven in court. Do you think that person should then be liable to to, to penalties? So that's another issue. I hear that question a lot. But once again, in court, you are proven beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Mm. You have to, you have to, at least in the United States, you have to show the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. So, um, so just because prosecutors or the plaintiff. Well, in a civil, it's a little bit lesser, but just because prosecutors fail to show that doesn't mean that the it didn't happen. So mm. let's say you are assaulted and then um, you go to the prosecutors and um, maybe they did a poor job collecting evidence or the evidence wasn't as clear as they wanted because it was like, okay, maybe it it looks yeah. like it could have been consensual or he was either assaulted or it was consensual. And then the prosecutors fail to prove that that doesn't necessarily mean it didn't happen. So yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. mm. So, so then, so then, yeah. That, so, so, so then because they didn't reach, you know, that there was one piece of like evidence that wasn't solid enough. And so it didn't, it didn't pass in the court. And then to then hit that person with penalties would be a bit draconian. right? Yeah. Especially because, okay, so like for civil, civil liability, it's down the middle. It's like, uh, it's a preponderance of the evidence, right? So it's like, okay, either she's right or it's 50-50 on who's right. But when it comes to the crime, when it, if you're accusing someone of a criminal allegation, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. It's no longer 50-50. It's like 99%. So the... So if the prosecutor isn't capable of showing beyond a reasonable doubt, which is a really high burden, that shouldn't automatically fall on the person who mm. uh, yeah. accused the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. And that's also then going to prevent more people from coming forward, which, you know, you could say is, you know, not, not good for Absolutely. Um, on Absolutely. On an unrelated note... What's happening with all the Trump stuff at the moment? Um, and and is he obviously he is now the front running 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 candidate, isn't he, for the Republicans? But what's what is because I, yeah, I haven't he's I have the only to, candidate. Well, that because think she really? dropped out, didn't she? Nikki so, isn't available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what happens now? Because I haven't I'm not totally up to date with where he is with all of his many you know court cases and all that sort of shit. But I mean, in a nutshell, is is he going to be allowed to run? And in your view, is is he, you know, what's going to happen? Do you think, he, I mean, it seems like he's likely to get in, right, if he does run, but are they going to try and prevent this or, or what? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure the Supreme Court just ruled that individual states aren't allowed to bar him from the ballot. Okay. So they're not going to be able to prevent him from running. I'm pretty sure I just saw a Supreme Court ruling on that. Um, I'll have to double check after this. But um, that was an issue about whether or not states can 
can just like prevent him from being on the ballot, but now it's no longer an issue. And so uh, I don't think that'll necessarily mean that he wins. I want him to win. Mm. I do want him to win. I'm very much a Trumper, but I have serious. Oh, I, I don't know. If I, I serious. Uh, I don't know how friend. I don't want to say this on YouTube actually, but yeah, especially on your channel, you know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> But I mean, Biden, I mean, it's, I could, I mean, hold on. My audio just cut out. Give me one second. Uh, it's go ahead. But I mean, I mean, I mean oh, I Biden, I mean, is he, is he, it, it, could, could he even do another four years? I mean, Jesus. So, I mean, looks like her audio is a bit yes. fucked. Um, um, it, so, SJ, okay, go ahead. SJ, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. SJ says it's interesting that Brandon Tate are blasted, but not arrested for the list well i mean tate's obviously in romania so it's slightly different at the moment um i don't understand that that comment really okay uh no so um yeah but i mean i mean like like biden i mean is it like <laughs> could biden win and i mean if he if he does is he gonna even be alive for the next four years to actually do it i mean it, it is <laughs> oh my god it's so funny that you asked that so i uh, I already had a bet with somebody when Biden won the first time. I was like, he's not going to survive four years. And they're like, yes, he is. And I was like, I will bet you right now. And they're like, I'll bet you $1,000. And I'm like, I do not want to bet $1,000. They're like, I'll give you $1,000 if you win. But if you lose, you have to wear a handmaid's costume for an entire week. <laughs> um, so well, that's fair. I am about to have to wear a handmaid's costume for an entire week. <laughs> Uh, so I don't want to bet on Biden's demise again, because apparently that zombie can just keep being the undead <laughs> president and mulling around pretending to be alive for as long as he wants. So um, and can Biden win again if he won the same way he did in 2020? If you catch my drift. Well, yeah. Picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm a bit concerned. I'm exceedingly concerned, uh, especially because we haven't fixed any of the issues. So all of the issues that I had with the 2020 election, pretty much all of pretty much all of them still exist. Um, if not have gotten worse and solidified by the individual Supreme Courts of the states. So um, so for instance, like mass mail out ballots, um, the not needing an a governmental ID to vote, uh, not needing a not verifying election signatures, um, all of these things that are that making the polls very loose mm. um, have not been fixed. So I'm very concerned. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to wait and see, I suppose. But uh, I mean, is there nobody is there nobody else on the Republican side that could have? I mean, I just nobody's as popular as him, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. Um. Who, who was that? Yeah. Dude? So. Who, who, oh no, he was a. Oh, who was it? Venter Cash or who, who's that dude that was seemed to be getting a lot of traction? Vivek. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Viv yeah, Vivek Rinswami was popular. Um, apparently, really nice guy. Mm. Um, yeah, he's on Luke Rudkowski's channel a bunch, and so. Did you see? Um, there was a really funny clip of uh, there was a British journalist, um, and she she interviewed Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Marjorie Taylor Greene told us to fuck off. <laughs> the, which, the end, which was quite funny. <laughs> no, I I don't know what's been happening with. So Marjorie Taylor, it used to be like there was like this Republican Freedom Group party or whatever. There was mm. like, um, you know how like there's the Jihad Squad. We had like an opposite to that. And it was like Matt Gates and Lauren Bober and Marjorie Taylor Greene. And it seems like MTG has been drifting from everybody, like from even Bober and Gates. And so, uh, yeah. So the, the Republican Party's fracturing a bit, unfortunately. What? So the sort of hyper... What, I, I thought it was fractured, but it was more like the the sort of i guess like the maga people and then the more old school kind of status but, but so it's like the maga versus the status okay and currently okay. i'm saying the maga people are fracturing oh they're fr right okay okay yeah so 
yeah, that's what's unfortunate. Um, MTG is definitely interesting. I wish I had space lasers. I really wish I did. Well, I, um, so, so, so I like you know. <laughs> So that's um, I, you know, I, I was wondering whether to mention that or not, but that's what because em- Emily Maitness, who's this 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 UK journalist, she's she sort of started asking about Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, so what about Trump? Blah blah blah, you know. And then she said, so you, you were coming out with some kind of conspiracy stuff at the moment. She said, what about these space lasers? And then Marjorie Taylor Greene says, why don't you talk about space lasers? Why don't you fuck off? And then walks off, which is was quite funny. But I mean, yeah, I don't know really. I mean, I'm I'm guess I'm guessing you're not on board. Uh... I'm guessing you're not on board with that theory. I don't know what theory MTG was talking about. I believe some of the same conspiracy theories that MTG believes in, but a lot of them I don't. I don't. I like, don't. I'm not really a person. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I, I'm not really like an adrenochrome person. You know what mm, I mean? I'm not yeah. really like. Mm. I'm not like in there. I'm not like a QAnon. I think right. MTG is a bit QAnon. I don't really blame the QAnons for being QAnons, especially because the government's been lying to us for so much. And often the QAnon stuff was truth mixed in with bullshit. So I see a lot of their points of view. Um, but I just because I'm not quite there. I don't know what what conspiracy she was talking about in this particular instance. Well, Maybe was- I do believe in her. She she was talking about the, the space lasers, which, to be honest, I I don't know a lot about, but there seemed to be an anti-Semitic aspect to that. I think I could be wrong. Yes, they're saying. Well, it depends on how you look at it, I guess. As a Jew, I personally think it would be cool as fuck if I had a bunch of space lasers. <laughs> Is that anti-Jewish to say that I have space lasers? I don't know. I want some goddamn space lasers. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you know. I could, I could do it some myself, to be honest. So I'm with you on that one for sure. Um, That'd be fucking dope. It would be. It would be. Like, think about the parties, like, with, like <laughs> laser lights. And, like, definitely. Definitely. Have an enemy just be like, boop. Yeah, yeah. Pearl I, box me on, on X. I'd be like, boop. <laughs> So I, I'll, 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 I'll ask her to unblock, I'll ask her to unblock you again. I'm sure. Like it's been a while now. You guys were you guys were besties before. It's gonna happen, isn't it? You know. We were best friends, best friends forever. And also, Andrew has taken a major nosedive in political popularity. So, Andrew Wilson. Oh, which is what the argument. So, how are you? Do you get on with him or what's your what's your what's your feeling on him? No, no, I'm not I'm not an Andrew Wilson guy. Uh I'm not an Andrew Wilson fan. Um and just with all of the recent stuff that's come out against him with the Britney uh, Britney Venti showing. Yeah. All of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I understand if you're not a Britney fan. I get that. I do. That being said, she brought receipts, and that was funny and accurate and painful. She can be and qu- mortifying. She can be quite funny sometimes. I don't, I don't know if you ever saw she 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 had a pop at me one time when I did supposedly did pearl styling. Um, it, it's it's it, 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 it's quite embarrassing. Actually. Yes, we actually <laughs> talked about that. We did. Yeah. Discuss, uh, you and I talked about that at the <laughs> cigar lounge. Yeah, my my so. yeah my 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 female styling skills obviously. Um, you know, they need a little bit of improvement, I think. But um, it was quite. I fun. would love to. I would love to style Pearl or style. And you have your own style for men. Well, you, you look, know, you look... when I'm in Miami, maybe we could do like a styling. We could do like a styling vlog or something like that. You know, that'd be fun. That'd be super um, fun. And how is Miami at the moment? Super hot. Everybody out in the streets partying. Uh it's pretty decent weather. It's uh sunny and blue looking out at the sky right now it's, uh in the ocean i have an ocean view uh it's beautiful yeah it's really nice a bunch of boats are out um a bunch of um food stand events things whatever mm. so yeah i'm all nice. for it well i need to get over there again soon it's been a little while so we need to hang out and Maybe, yeah, come uh, visit. Come visit. 100%. Come say hi to your girl Pixie too. Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent, man. It's been too long. Um, all right. Well, look, thanks ever so much for coming on and talking about this stuff. It's been actually a really interesting conversation, and um, I mean, there's so many different elements to this. I mean, ultimately, with the Tate stuff, we, we, we're kind of going to have to to see what happens. I mean, nobody can really predict, but um, I think some of the wider things coming coming out. I, I suppose just just one very final thing. I mean, do you think in the current climate, men should look to protect themselves more? because of what's happening out there and if so 
is there any way of doing that? I mean, is it about even having recording devices in your room when you're getting intimate? I mean, that can get you into trouble, right? Because you can get done for, you know, invasive recording and stuff. So, I mean, would you have any words of advice if there's any guys watching this and they're thinking, shit, you know, I can't even date anymore because I might end up on a, you know, the wrong end of a charge? Um. Yeah, so I do think having like, um, I do think having things like a, an Apple Watch or a um, having your phone in your pocket a lot could be potentially helpful in the future. So thinking about um, when that's when our Supreme Court justice was accused, he was like, I had never even been to that house before. If he had, you know, always had record of where he was, mm. like for yeah. a significant period of time, I think that would be really helpful. Uh, something that wasn't available to him back when he, on the date that he was accused. Um, but it is available now. Uh, what else? I mean, I suppose having a lot of text messages with the girl beforehand yeah. showing like consent. Obviously, you could still uh, recant consent closer to the time, but that would help. It's just circum circumstantial evidence that does weigh in your favor. <clears throat> Um, what and then, else and then after, I, after mean, I think there was what about sort of yeah. after the event as well like often guys will say oh it's it's nice to you know the next day you guys are texting and she's like yeah I had a great time last night blah 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 because then I suppose that adds some validity to the fact that you know the interaction was above board let's say yeah I mean I, I don't think that's a bad idea Um, like all of those things would help all of those things are circumstantial evidence. Um, then again, it doesn't prove anything necessarily because a lot of times you would say like, oh, I just said, mm. oh, I just said that because yeah. I didn't want to piss him off. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get him off. I didn't want to explain. He asked me how it was. I just said fine because he, mm. he already, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, right. But yeah. no, I agree. It is circumstantial evidence. It's something that would be used in your favor, but it's one of those gray areas that you could never be like a hundred percent safe ever. Yeah. I, I mean, so. I think, I mean, one thing personally, and this is just from a personal point of view, I don't, I don't like to, it, like, I don't think you should be getting into situations where the girl is like super drunk and you guys end up hooking up. I think that's a bad vibe. I think it's a bad vibe anyway, because you don't really want to be, you know, you it's know, illegal you too. You well, can't sorry, consent so when you're you can't consent when drunk. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You have to have consent before sex. You can't consent when you're impaired. Fine. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Apologies. So I should. We should. I'm. Thanks yeah. for making that clear. I think. Okay. It, well, like, but what if she's yeah. had a couple of drinks and she's getting a little bit? I mean, I think I'm not saying no alcohol is involved, but at the same time, I think anything. Well, it's 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 good that you've said that now because now people know. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't want to be messing around in those situations. You know, it it, it, it needs to be a situation where, it, it you know it, it can be shown or at least demonstrated that there wasn't any sort of like you know substances involved or coercion of that kind involved. I think. Yeah, I think it's really stupid to hook up with a girl after she's drank, really even at all, unless you're in a committed relationship and you like trust and know this woman and like a couple of drinks. But even even if you're in a committed relationship, if she's too drunk to consent, she cannot consent. Um, and another thing that's really scary that people don't know, um, at least in America, I don't know about UK law, but let's say you meet a girl at a bar and you're like, oh man, she looks young, but you know, I'll ask her for her ID because, but she's in the bar, so she should be 21. So she shows mm. you her ID, says she's 21. You guys hook up. Turns out she's 16, 17. Uh, that's strict liability. It doesn't matter that you checked her ID. It doesn't matter that you met her at a bar. It doesn't matter that she lied to you. It doesn't matter at all. It's strict liability in America. So sure. you are going on a list and going to prison even though you thought you did everything you can. So like it is, I don't like, I don't know. What do you even do in that situation? I, I don't know. That's, that's so just be wary. That's really, that's really bad because um, yeah. I mean, you've, you've kind of tried to do your due, due diligence, haven't you? And then that doesn't even get you off the hook. It's uh, that's, that's, that's pretty fucked, man. So basically you want to go for older, older, older looking ladies who are completely sober. Basically, basically go to AA to pick up. That's that's the basic strategy. Go go to AA. Uh, 
meet some like you know kind of milfy type, right. milfy type women go for a coffee and then and then you're you know maybe you've got a slightly better chance of not getting into trouble yeah become a candy striper at a nursing home you know <laughs> like <laughs> see we're giving some real actionable advice here now it's not just you know we're not just talking theory um when you go to Pornhub, look up mature get yourself in the mind for that get yourself <laughs> used to that <laughs> Yeah, it's the way forward. It really is. Um, anyway, listen, Lauren, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, I'm glad we finally got to do this because um, it's, we've been talking about this for a while. And it'd be good, obviously, to do something if you'll have me on your channel at some point as well. We can talk about something else. Um, of course. And um, Yeah, we'll figure that out. Yeah, great on stuff. On my calendar right here. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I will okay. be, um, I'll be over in Miami pretty soon, I think, anyway. So we'll talk about that offline and I'll let you know what the dates are and stuff. All righty. Catch Good stuff. you later. Oh, just, just Thanks actually, for having me. No problem. Just remind them where they can find you before you go. Oh, yeah. You could find me on Twitter, now known as X. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, and you can find me on YouTube under the moniker Lauren De Laguna. You could even find me on Twitch and Kick. But Good stuff. Lauren Good De Laguna, stuff. that's D-E-L-A-G-U-N-A. Great stuff. All righty, guys. All righty. Many thanks. Bye. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Well, there we go. So I think that was a pretty interesting show. So Lauren, I've known for um, I've known for a while now. She's a cool girl. Obviously, she is. Um, she's well. She's passed the bar now. I think in two states. Um, she's gonna be practicing law. She's got um, her YouTube channel, which you should check out. She's coming at this from a conservative perspective. I think she is open, as you could see, to some of the red pill type ideas. Although you know, there's certain things where she's going to disagree, which is fine. But, uh, you know, great person to have a conversation with. And I think it was actually really useful to have her on this because um, it just added an extra dimension. Because while I'm pretty well versed on the the Tate situation, it was quite interesting just to get her input as somebody who sort of understands, even if not in the UK or in Romania, but she understands legal process probably better than I do. So overall, I think it was good. But anyway, let me know what you thought of the show in the comments beneath. Please do uh, give us a like to push this video up the algorithm and um, make sure that you hit subscribe to this channel uh, if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Good night and have a good evening. Bye-bye.